All right, so I am sitting here and um, I'm going, I'm not right now, uh, going through the book. All right, got it here. It's called Making Ideas Happen. I actually tried to do this three different times in my office and every time it did not work. Um, every single time that I tried to create a video, I was using my computer and I was using my laptop and the first time, it was the first time I've ever used iMovie and so I'm trying to get it to work. Apparently it didn't record. Second time, it recorded but no, with no sound. So here we are, we're on the third time, and I thought, you know, I know my phone works, I know I can get this done. But here's the problem. The problem is, is that nine times out of 10, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that, 99 times out of 100, um, I would have essentially abandoned this before I even hit uh, version 1.0. Right? I would have sat there and I said, oh, I don't have a green screen, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, it's not a professional camera, it's my camera phone. I can't use that, or can I? The point is, is that too often I sit there and I want to challenge the very presumption of what I need to do to get the job done. <laughs> my job today was to put out a video, and every time I turned around, I ran into problems and yet I decided that since my job was to put out the video that that's what I was gonna do I wasn't continually challenging whether or not it looked great and all this kind of stuff put the video out do the work and here's the thing so I'm reading through Scott Belsky's book uh, making ideas happen and on page 89 uh, he comes up with this uh, this thing that he says here he says um, structure is a mechanism that you can use to preserve the possibility of change in passionate creative pursuits rather than invite consideration of change at any time many creative teams set up periodic meetings throughout the development process called challenge meetings in a challenge meeting, anyone is invited to ask and answer questions like, what doesn't make sense with our current plan? What are we missing and what should change? What doesn't make sense? What are we missing? And what should we change? And I'm pressing through this and there were a couple things that came to mind. Number one, um, Seth Godin calls it the lizard brain, right? That kicks in and tries to stop a project. We challenge something right before we're about to launch a project, project or, or product or website or whatever the case may be. In fact, actually, I recently had this happen with a website that we were launching. The funny part is, is in this circumstance, I was the one going, let's launch it, let's launch it, let's launch it. And my partner was looking at it saying, no, 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 we need to do this, we need to challenge this, we need to do this, we need to do this. I said, where are you getting this from? He said, well, I'm looking at this website over here, comparing it. I said, listen, I said, that's version 30. That's version 30. They've been around for 10 years. They've been doing it for 10 years. They've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm sorry, millions of dollars. And they've reinvested hundreds of thousands of dollars into that site. We are not at that point. We are at version 1.0. In fact, we're not even at version 1.0. We haven't even launched version 1.0 yet. And we're challenging and challenging and challenging. The point where we need to say, just do it. Pull the trigger, version 1.0. And you know what? After that, we can challenge, how is it? How is it working? How can we tweak it? How can we look at what they're doing and make ours better? But the first thing it has to do, it has to generate some sort of revenue. It will never generate revenue. We will never have more money to put into it unless we launch version 1.0. So lesson number one, there's a point where challenge meetings make sense and there's a point where challenge meetings don't. Challenge meetings before is good, but there's a point where you gotta say, enough challenges, pull the trigger. Version two, or, or step number two is this, is that in my life, in my business, when I'm running through things, my problem is, is I challenge at any time. I'm constantly having new thoughts, new ideas. Oh, how, here's how I can make this better. Here's how, here's, how, uh, here's how this would be better. And I never end up even giving anything a try. I'm constantly revamping, constantly renewing, and saying, oh, this would be good. Instead of for a season, giving the ideas and challenges that I had at my last point, giving them a chance to ride, finding out if they work. 
the tweaks that need to be made. So step number two, or step number one, go ahead and pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. You've challenged it up to a point. It's time to release it. Start letting it generate some revenue. Number two, schedule challenge meeting times. Don't challenge at any time. Schedule the meetings. Uh, in the book, uh, Getting Things Done, that was part of it, right? We want to take it. We want to externalize that memory. We want to externalize that appointment. We want to externalize that thought. Put it onto a calendar somewhere and say, this will be my challenge time. Then as I'm driving down the road and I have this revelation, I say, oh, I need to do this. So running back to the office and going, oh, I need to revamp my whole system. I set up a challenge time in which I actually, number one, have the time to adequately address this and ask the important questions and look at the things. And number two, it makes sure that I can make those incremental changes. Not sweeping, awesome changes. I can go from version 1.0 to version 1.1. Not version one and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, spend all kinds of time and do a sweeping change. There will be times when sweeping change is important and is necessary, but I can decide that within a scheduled challenge meeting. So stop getting distracted by the challenges and the lizard brain that is freaking out because of products launching or because um, we're putting ourselves out there. Those are the feelings that are attached with that, right? I'm putting myself out here. I'm freaking out. What if people don't like me? Number three, have people in our lives who will help us with this challenge. Perfect example here is family. Now, um, maybe you're in a business where, um, maybe you're in a business where you've got a team and you guys can come together and do this. Me personally, I'm not in a team at like that. I'm not in a group where we can go, okay, hey, let's talk about our lead flow. Hey, let's talk about um, our online presence. We're, we can't challenge any of that. I'm on my own. So one of the examples that I think of is my family. My family is an organization that I help run. And you know what? How often we have challenge meetings, how often I open myself up as the quote unquote leader of my family. As the leader of my family, how often do I open it up and say, hey, how are we doing? You know, Scott Belsky says, what doesn't make sense in our current plan? What are we missing? What should we change? Man, if there's an organization in our lives that is absolutely fundamentally running on, on, on routine, it is our family. And yet we don't stop and ask the question, what can we challenge? How can we do it better? And part of it is, is because we don't have a goal in mind. In our businesses, we have a goal in mind. Make money. In our family, what's our goal? So if our family has a goal, a core, a core mission statement, if our family has core values, um, and we can stop every once in a while and go, how are we doing, and get input from everyone. It doesn't say, mean that we have to do it. The kids are always gonna say, well, I think we should have ice cream for dinner every night. No. They can, but in that challenge meeting, they have the opportunity to bring that up. So there you go. That's, that's, do you have people who can challenge you? In your challenge meeting, do you have people who can challenge you? If you're in a business setting, network, get together, find some other people. Find other people maybe in the same industry at another place that you can teleconference with and go, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking about my business. Here's how I'm challenging. This is what I'm finding working. This is what not. <coughs> this is what's not. So that is the goal is to have a challenge meeting. So number one, make it happen. Pull the trigger. Do version 1.0. Stop challenging so much. Number two, schedule regular challenge meetings so that you can tweak and change. And number three, have people who can speak into the routines and the things that need to be challenged. People who are involved in the same uh, business, same business field, whatever. 
I'm Matthew Parsons, uh, pulling the trigger, version 1.0. Not what I wanted it to look like, but there you go. It happened. Thanks. God bless.